I greet you, Lord's holy name. We'll continue our study from the book of <coughs> Psalms. I requested uh, dear sister Lavanya from Hyderabad to lead us in prayer. Sister Lavanya. Uh, good evening, uncle. Good evening. Am I audible, uncle? Yes, sir, Lavanya. Okay, let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, precious Lord, King of King, Almighty God, thank you, Lord for giving a one more year and one more day in our lives so father lord you are so marvelous god you are doing wonderful things in our lives so father lord we praise you father we worship you lord lord you are ever changing father of oh father lord we praise you lord you are, thank you for your steadfast love thank you for your mercy of oh father Every day, it's new to our lives, so Father. Lord, thank you, Lord, for using Billy Uncle as your mouthpiece, so Father. Lord, you are so good, God, in our lives, so Father. We praise you, Lord. Lord, help us uh, and uh, lead us in your way, of oh Father. Revive yourself in your in your way, of oh Father, and reveal your, uh, uh, revive in your way, say, oh Father. Lord, establish your word in our lives, oh Father. Lord, that we may bring glory to your name, oh Father. Lord, please help us, oh Father. Be with us, oh Father, and uh, submitting each and everyone to your mighty hand, oh Father, Lord, and bless this time, oh Lord. I'm praying in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Lavinia, for that meaningful prayer. Thank you. Uh, we started on Monday. Uh, book of Psalms, though it is the uh, biggest book in the Bible, we can see that uh, five books are inside Psalms, and it really helps us to worship the Lord and praise Him. And it is not the only thing. There are many other things we can learn from the book of Psalms. Exciting book. And uh, it is not only just a personal experience of pouring out our heart and praying to God and praising him. Rather, as a community, how we have to grow. That is very, very important. So when we look at Psalms, we cannot afford to miss that uh, it is for the community of God's people. And uh, though it is very personal, sometimes we go to God and cry out and receive blessings. Then we come back and worship the Lord, testifying what the Lord has done in our life and God is good. That's what we have uh, seen in the beginning. Then we looked at Psalm 1 and 2. There we have seen that we need to be separated from the world. We need to be saturated with God's word. And we need to be situated in, in such a way that uh, we'll be growing along with others. And we will be a tree with, uh, filled with fruits. We'll be a blessing to others. And also, we looked at, we need to differentiate between the voice from the world and voice from the word or God's uh, voice. We need to have a grace to understand the difference between these two. Because it's not only people who are working, talking against God, working against God. Definitely, those who are us, we live with uh, people around, even among the Christians. We need to be very careful that they will not be leading us in a wrong way. And secondly, we looked at Exodus story, the Exodus experience. And uh, we looked at four important things. The people who are under the bondage, they are really downcast. They were really uh, feeling bad and they are not in a position to come out. And depression and all sorts of uh, uh, feelings that uh, we are not in a position to enjoy. That's what we have seen yesterday. Four songs uh, are highlighting that. But it's not the end. We can see that even in that same uh, Psalms and even in some other verses, immediately it says that I will trust him. I will uh, praise him. How it comes, it is the deliverance we receive from God. But uh, we have noted down yesterday, Psalm 51, so powerful in terms of uh, the sin and shame. David could confess 
and could get the deliverance from God. Mighty uh, acts of God, the way in which God acts is so mighty. That's what we have seen yesterday, not only in uh, Exodus, even as songs, it's highlighted. And in the close, we have noted down uh, that uh, the purpose of our deliverance is for the sake of others. Nation, nations should be blessed. People groups, people of different background should be blessed by us. That's the purpose of the church. That's the purpose of uh, our families. We need to be very uh, open and we need to be uh, much uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit. So, we'll be a, so that we'll be a witnesses in our neighborhood and all over the world. We can be a blessing. That's God's plan for the people of Israel. And even for us, the nations should be our uh, focus. That's what uh, yesterday we have finished. Five books. And so far we have finished first two books. Today we are going to look at Psalm 73 till Psalm 106. Book 3 and book 4 we are going to look at. So that God willing, tomorrow we can, we can see the last book. It's a bigger one. 107 to 150. Today, we have to concentrate on two things. One is uh, related to Leviticus and another one is related to Numbers. Book 3, uh, that is Psalm 79 to 89, 73 to 89, that we could uh, see that uh, Psalms of David is not there. In fact, in 72 last verses, the Psalms of David are finished. But uh, later, even in book four and book five, we can see so, uh, David's Psalms are highlighted, but that and all used by others and fit in in that context. Interestingly, in book three, no Psalms of David is there, but uh, Aspa and Korah, these two people, they have written many of the Psalms. Yesterday itself, we started with Korah's Psalms. And uh, Aspa is the one who is uh, going to look at now. When we, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Aspa will be looking at a little later that uh, he's part of David's team and Korah is part of the, uh, David's team. They're all worshiping uh, together. And they have written psalms, and their psalms are later compiled for this reason. And some commentators say it is uh, Joshua, when the revival is going on in Israel, uh, that king was there. In fact, Judah. And uh, otherwise, it could be Ezekiah. Ezekiah or Joshua, <clears throat> either one of these kings. They might have taken time to compile these important psalms. That's the way they look at. This is before exile. Before 610, uh, compiling of this uh, book three might have been done. Interestingly, <clears throat> when you look at some of the psalms, we know that uh, it is about the worship. As I said yesterday, it is not in the temple. It is more of the tabernacle where the people of God meet to, meeting together and worshiping the Lord. And also, there is one more thought. It comes very forcefully. It's about the uh, approach of uh, believers to God, how to approach holy God. And uh, when you look at the Psalms, we know that uh, the inner working of the human heart is very much highlighted. The real problems of the human beings are highlighted. But keep it in mind. As the Leviticus says, God's rule or God's mandates or God's uh, uh, laws are highlighted for our day-to-day -day living. It is to us God how we have to behave and with others how we have to behave. It is uh, the highlight of book four. And uh, book five, uh, sorry, book four talks about um, unknown uh, authors. There are many psalms 
or by unknown authors. Only three Psalms are David's Psalms, the famous 103. It is uh, David's Psalm. Like that, there are some uh, Psalms only David, otherwise it's unknown. But clearly, we can see that uh, the content is very close to the wilderness and ups and downs, failures, that and all we can see that. So one thing is very clear that the wilderness and wandering experience of ups and downs are highlighted in the Psalms. And another one is very clear, even in that situation, expression of pra praise, worship is highlighted. When you look at the Psalms in number itself, we can see that uh, between 90 and uh, 106, we can remember 95, we can remember 100. These are the Psalms normally we use in our corporate worships. When you're asked to, immediately when you're asked to lead a worship time, then immediately you can go to Psalm 95. The other ways you can go to Psalm 100. I have heard many, many times people use Psalm 100 uh, to lead the congregation into worship. So keep it in mind, it is part of wilderness life, the expression of pr praise. Interestingly, commentators say that uh, who has compiled it, when it was done, when you look at the content of the Psalms, we know that it is done later part. Some believe it could be Nehemiah, some believe that it could be Ezra. I'm comfortable with uh, Ezra because his heart was like that. And even when we are studying Psalm 119, I was mentioning that uh, uh, if we have an option who can be the uh, author of Psalm 119, I would go for Ezra. There are many of possibilities because Ezra is rooted in God's word and he was committed for people to worship the Lord. And fourth book and fifth book, people say that Nehemiah and Ezra would have involved. <clears throat> Today, uh, we are going to read one psalm. I was wondering, not two psalms, whether to take two psalms, one from book three and book four, but later I was very comfortable with uh, taking decision to keep only one psalm, that is 84. A very lovely uh, and beautiful psalm. I'm sure that all you might have heard many messages and you yourself might have preached from Psalm 84. I'm so happy that uh, again, uh, our brother John Jim. The scripture portion for this evening Bible study has been taken from Psalms 84 verse 1 to 12. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns even fans for the cause of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself. Where she may have been our young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising now. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the belly of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pores. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayers, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on your seal, O God. Look with your favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than a dwellers in the tent of wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and seal, the Lord bestow favor and honor. No good things does he withhold from those whose work in, is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. May God add his blessing upon the reading of his holy word. Thank you. Let me thank uh, dear brother John Bin from Mahalaya for reading this scripture portion. Before we go into this psalm, we need to uh, make note of other psalms in this uh, book, book three. Uh, there are 11 psalms are from Aspa. It starts from 73. You can see that uh, 
book of book three starts with uh, 70 psalm 73 uh, it is simple way it says a psalm of aspa and who is this aspa in first chronicles chapter 15 verses 16 and 17 we read this david told the leaders of levites to appoint their fellow levites as musicians to make a joyful sound with musical instruments. Then, so the Levites appointed Haman, uh, the son of Joel from the relatives, Aspa, son of Berechia. Here is the man, Asha, son of Berechia. That uh, we know that uh, he is part of this choir. This is their Levitical background. And uh, not that all the people in Levit, uh, Levites are singers. When we are studying Ezra, we saw that when they wanted to have a time of worship, the team of people who are appointed by Nehemiah as worshippers, music uh, leaders, are separate. They are part of Levitical family, but they are part uh, of a choir. So my dear brothers and sisters, keep it in mind. This uh, dear friends who wrote other psalms in the book of Psalms are part of David, David's life. And they are part of um, David's choir. Why do I say that? In these days, uh, writing songs, composing songs, and singing songs are important for our life and for our community, living, for our church. It's very important. Most of our conferences, we have a theme song coming out by our own members. But how much we are excited and how much we are committed for composing. And uh, not only David, even his own team members have written. That's what I wanted to highlight. And I motivate you. Think of writing choruses and for, from your own experience, start writing a song. You may not be a very good composer. You may not be a very good uh, songwriter. But uh, if God gives you burden, sit down and write. It will be very useful. It's very useful. Think of it. Psalm 73 and 74 are interesting psalms. And by the way, I have to tell you that uh, in the psalms, there are uh, psalms like this. Immediately next to that is the connecting uh, thought. Yesterday we saw 42 and 43. They are very well connected. In fact, some people think that it is one psalm. It is divided into 42 and 43. Even later we are going to see 90 and 91. It's like that. Twin. And uh, here 73 starts with God is good for, the, for his people, Israel. Very true. God is good. And we all sing that uh, uh, famous song. God is good all the time and um, we are praising God. But when you look at Psalm 73, verse 2 onwards, we see that uh, it's a little different. The, the psalmist, but as for me, my feet had almost slipped. But when I look at the world, he says, the bad people are enjoying good health. Bad people are enjoying everything. But remember, first verse says very clearly, surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. That way it started. So one commentator has given a title. Um, for bad people, good things are happening. But in 74, Psalm 74, good people are suffering. So the same commentator say in the second paragraph, a second Psalm 74, he says bad things are happening to good people. Very interesting. I like that uh, heading. But that's not fully true. When you look at these two Psalms, that's not fully true. But one way he's right. Uh, good things are happening to bad people. Then in the end of Psalm 73, he says, still God is in control. And God will punish them and their punishment is going to be serious. 74, good people 
they have bad times. Then later, he says very clearly, God is good. And definitely, uh, God will answer or God will bless his good people. So my dear brothers and sisters, uh, that's the way he, this uh, whole book is developed. Uh, 75 talks about uh, the judgment of God. Later, 78, it talks about God's love. He's not only God of uh, anger, God of justice. He's God of love. God is merciful. Lovely Psalm 78. Then uh, uh, Psalm 81 talks about the new strength God is giving. Those who are depending on God as they are uh, worshipping the Lord. God is cleansing them. God gives new strength. And 84, continually we get God's blessings. That's the way uh, the whole book is uh, connected. Basically, uh, these two authors have written Psalms in terms of the real practical life. Bad people are flourishing and as a believer, I struggle hard. And good people are struggling, but at the same time, I know that my God is a God of just and God is God of love. My dear brothers and sisters, when you look at the book of Leviticus, that's what we see. You be faithful to God and God expects you such a standard from your life. In that background, let's look at Psalm 84. Let's take a little time to uh, talk about this Psalm 84. It seems in uh, definitely in that time, in the Old Testament times, at least three times in a year, people of Israel have to come to Jerusalem. Even in Jesus' birth, we see that they were all going to Jerusalem. And when he was 12 years old, uh, Jesus stayed back after the festival mood. And they are thinking that uh, mother and father thinking that he's coming along with other boys, but he stayed back. That's what we read. So it is not um, unusual for people to go to Jerusalem, even in terms of First Samuel, Elkanah and Hannah went to Jerusalem. And every year, that's what we read. So uh, every year they go. And when they're going, Psalms are very important. They sing and they enjoy, they go with that happiness. But I'm just imagining in these days, if you'll go to a church or if you'll go to a, a camp or if you'll go to a place like Jerusalem, uh, you may be in a van, you may be in a car, but everybody will have a earphone and have their own songs. I'm not talking about Sini songs. I'm talking about Christian songs. But we are not willing to sing with along with others. We have our own interest songs. Even just before this uh, uh, Bible study, you might have heard a song. My grandson and granddaughter started dancing because for them, the rhythm is so beautiful for dance. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. If you are uh, enjoying the corporate singing, very, very important. It's not only going to Jerusalem or going to the camp. Naturally, we need to enjoy the uh, singing times, worshiping times. I don't know in your church, how is your singing time, worship times? I see nowadays it became monot monotonous. They think they are lively, but uh, some of them are uh, uh, crazy. That's some of them are very crazy. And some of them are very monotonous in terms of uh, very dull. There is no life at all in worship. But there should be a real balance. Uh, if, if you stand and worship, then only you can enjoy. That's not a good idea. Only with rhythm and music, then only enjoy uh, singing. That is also not good. All are important. You can stand and worship. You can kneel down and worship. You can sit and worship. But that should be spirit and uh, life should be there. And music, very important. That's what we read right now. In First Chronicles chapter 15, David was telling, you call these people and let them have their musical instruments. But in these days, I see that in some of the programs, in some of the choir, music is dominating or 
music, uh, people who are involved in music, no commitment at all. I think of my first choir master in my church. Uh, uh, we are all small boys. We are part of choir. And our choir master was a elderly man. And he has a bad habit of smoking. And in the church, very nice choir master. And when the pastor goes to preach, our choir master will go slowly uh, out from the church. And then he will smoke. And with all this, uh, set, he set everything right. And he'll come back for the um, closing song. Very bad. Very bad. I'm, I'm not talking, I'm not blaming this man. He has gone, he's no more. But there are many people in the choir, they take things lightly. They are very good musicians, but there is no commitment at all. So that's what I'm very much worried about. Our song should be meaningful. How we sing is very important and it should be uh, motivating others. Let me uh, conclude with a nice uh, positive illustration. Long, long back, I had the privilege of attending a leadership training camp in Shillong. I was invited for the first time I'm going to Shillong. Um, Pine Brook is a camp center. I still remember Pine Brook, a nice camp center. And uh, after the session, when I came out, I was surprised to see in the lunchtime, in the tea time, somebody will sit and start singing in the guitar, not with many, many music instruments. With one guitar, they'll start singing. Others will go just go and join. And in some other place, maybe some of them will sit together. Boys and girls will be sitting together and they will start. There's no fight. What song we have to sing, how to song. And there is no jokes saying that, no, 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 it's very bad tone. Not nothing of that sort. They enjoy singing. Nobody asked them to do it. Nowadays, we have to compel them to put them in two by two. We have to compel them to put uh, groups to uh, pray together and sing together. But that was spontaneous. I praise God. I praise God. I have to tell John Bin, I, uh, I have to tell him, uh, he's from Mehalaya and in Northeast camps. It is important. But nowadays, I don't know, uh, Northeast, how is it? Nowadays, when we come out of a camp situation, immediately, just before going to the lunch or after the lunch or uh, immediately when we come out for tea, everybody will have their mobile phones. You can see that. Confidently say, I may not say everybody, 80% of them will have their uh, uh, calls are waiting. Then they have to make immediate calls because uh, uh, tea time is 4.30 means before 5.30, they have to finish all the missed calls. <laughs> we are all become busy, busy people. We are not enjoying the singing. If it is so, how are you going to enjoy the singing at home? How are you going to enjoy singing when others are together? My dear brothers and sisters, with a heavy heart, I want to share with you the book of Psalms motivates us to enjoy the presence of God and uh, through singing and uh, highlighting God's word. Psalm 84 has these three words, um, verses, comes out with that, blessed, blessed are those. Clearly it's there. Verse four, it says, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Lovely, lovely. The blessing of dwelling. Yesterday itself I told you, as a retired person, as an old man, sitting and uh, in the temple, or in the church and worshiping the Lord is not the real meaning itself. In 24 7, uh, sorry, 27 4, he can say that I enjoy the presence of God. And here it says, Blessed are those who dwell in your house, they are ever praising you. Just before that, two verses say that uh, the little sparrows, they can have the house there and they enjoy your presence. That's a beautiful uh, um, way of uh, uh, bringing that concept. So my dear brothers and sisters, I'm not saying that you be in the temple, the church or lifelong, but how much I enjoy the presence of God, dwelling in God's presence. Be a blessed person, be a blessed person. 
Blessed are those who dwell in your house, they are ever praising you. Many of us, for praising means we have a set times only, set days or set times. Verse 5, blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. Commentators say that uh, possibility is uh, this man, the son uh, Korah, he did not get a chance to go in that pilgrimage, go to Jerusalem. So he is singing. That could be one possibility. Otherwise, he may be singing for people who are going towards this pilgrimage. That is towards Jerusalem. To be in the presence of God, people are going. Look at verse 5. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. Whose strength is in you. Whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. It is not only just singing. The heart is set. The desire of the heart is very, very important. You are a blessed person if you have a real desire in your heart. My dear brothers and sisters, uh, tomorrow I'll be mentioning about various psalms which are very, very important for us to consider. I don't know whether so far you have considered Psalm 15. Definitely you might have considered 123, 91, uh, 121. These are the Psalms definitely you might have considered. Have you ever considered Psalm 15? If not, hear me reading now. Psalm 15, that is a Psalm of David. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? The one whose walk is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from the heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does not wrong to a neighbor and cast no slur on others, but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps on oath even when it hurts and does not change their mind, who lends money to the poor without interest, who does not accept a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things will never be shaken. My dear friends, Psalm 15 is beautiful. Beautiful. Don't miss it. So when you look at Psalms, don't think it is only praising the Lord. Hallelujah. That's wonderful. But it talks about my heart. Even you remember Jesus when he was talking about the Beatitudes in Matthew. He was telling those who are pure in heart are blessed people. And the, then he says those who are uh, thirsty for righteousness are blessed people. I like that. Those who are thirsty. I am thirsty for righteousness. My heart's desire is for righteousness. Keeping that in mind, Jesus' uh, message, when you look at Psalm 15, so relevant for us. Uh, the whole list is mentioned. These are the people who can dwell in God's presence and uh, they can be in the presence, uh, they can receive the blessings. So let's check our hearts. Uh, we may be super spiritual, we may be outside, and we can nicely pray, and we can nicely worship the Lord, lead Bible studies, and do many things. But inside the heart, if you are corrupt, then we are not set to go to be in the presence of God on that pilgrimage. Verse, 20, uh, verse 12, Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Blessed is the one who trusts in you. My dear brothers and sisters, uh, easy to uh, just say that I, I trust in the Lord. But how much my trust? Is it uh, I trust many things and along with that I trust God? Or really am I trusting the Lord? Number one. Number two, whether my trust is growing or is it in the saturating situation? Just before this Bible study, uh, some one senior couple from Salem they came to visit us. They were they wanted to be with us for a short time, but they were talking and talking, 
and they were sharing about that experience in a ministry. Along with one more brother, they went to the villages and then they started ministry and they started sharing about uh, people having simple trust. Uh, in one person's house, the cow is not uh, getting up. And they asked this brother to pray. And he prayed. And they really trusted that those people trusted that when you pray in Jesus' name, things will happen. And they started saying many, many stories. Now, after five years, ten years, when they go to this village, they're so happy to see that the Lord has honored their hope, their faith, honored their trust in him. Now the question is, we were also like that. When we are early in our spiritual stay life, we were depending on God for everything. Praying and receiving, enjoying the presence of God in depending on him, trusting in him. But what about now? We have to check ourselves. So the uh, first portion is basically by two people who have written, Kora and uh, Aspa. They have written Psalms basically to consider us to uh, think of the relationship with God. But uh, the fourth book, let's take some time to look at uh, Psalms 90 to 106. There are uh, 16 Psalms and uh, very interesting passage. Uh, I would say that it's very important uh, passage because it is uh, part of worship. At the same time, this uh, passage talks about uh, true life, true life. Look at Psalm 90. The heading says, a prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lovely title. A prayer of Moses, the man of God. As I told you on Monday, the Psalms are compiled, or there are Psalms, real Psalms were there, but somebody has compiled it. And they consciously wanted to bring a song of Moses. You remember in Exodus, in 15th chapter, when they are delivered from Egypt, Moses sang. And uh, I'm sure that you remember uh, Deuteronomy, we studied. In the end, after 30, we see that Moses sang a big uh, uh, song of uh, praising, looking back to history. This song is not in Exodus, it is not in Deuteronomy. And commentators say that it is during in the wilderness. Moses has song. And in Chronicles, we can read about it. And uh, this song is taken carefully to start the book of uh, fourth book of Psalms. And many things uh, we can note down as you read this Psalm, you can see that uh, the true life is coming out. As we are in the beginning of a new academic, a new year, uh, I'm sure that uh, most of us might have read this Psalm in the churches. Uh, normally end of the year, they sing this Psalm, uh, beginning of the year, uh, Psalm 90 is famous for that occasion. Interestingly, 91 is a combination of 90. That is trust in God. The true life is like this. It's a wilderness. It's, it's walking here and there. That later we are going to look at uh, some of the verses here. But uh, even verse 14, satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Moses is talking about days. And uh, 91 talks about trusting in God. Very interestingly, uh, it has filled with promises. During this uh, COVID-19, I'm sure that uh, you might have heard pastors, preachers reading Psalm 91 in different, different contexts. I'll just uh, highlight some of the verses. Verse uh, 91, verse 4 and 5. Uh, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find uh, refuge. His faithfulness will be like a shield and rampart. Verse 5. 
you will not fear the terror of night, not the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stakes in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. My dear brothers and sisters, I'm sure that verse five and six, uh, it's very uh, beautiful promise. In the daytime and in the night, God will protect you. You remember when they were in wilderness, that's what exactly happened. In the nighttime, they could have light. If they are moving, even in nighttime also they can walk because the God was the light for them. In the daytime, it is not too much of sunshine. God has kept sky in such a way that even if they are going to take rest in the daytime, they can relax, re, re, really relax. For some of us in summer, we cannot take rest in the daytime because it's too hot. But it's not like that. God has controlled uh, day and night. Now, this is a promise for us. If you know the God of history, God of Israel, then you can be confident. My daytime and my nighttime is protected by God and God alone. I trust in him. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Psalm 95, very powerful uh, song of praise. As I said, uh, many times we might have read it in our worship time. But when you look at uh, verse 8 onwards, it's a strong words. Do not harden your hearts as you did at uh, Maryam, as you did the day at Masha in the wilderness, where your ancestors tested me and tried me though they had seen what I did. Praising. And uh, they were uh, singing uh, songs for God. But other side of the same song says, in the wilderness, people are disobedient. And don't be like that. The wilderness exp experience is given as a warning here in this song. One more observation. Psalm 101. Very interesting. It says that it is a David song. After a gap, we can see that uh, it is uh, David. It's not 100. It is 101. 100 is a very famous uh, uh, psalm on worship. And here we see that 101 talks about a just society. Maintaining a just society. My dear brothers and sisters, I was amazed to see the context in which Psalm 101 has come. We are very much excited with worship. But how much we are concerned about our churches, our organizations will maintain a just society. In the wilderness experience, that was there, very much there. There are people who are sinning. They were murmuring. They were against God. At the same time, the society was formed based in God's word, the law of the law, Lord. They were tuned towards a just society. So keep that in mind. And uh, songs of praise and thanksgiving. Tomorrow we'll be looking at it in detail. That also very much here. Um, so two things I wanted to uh, share with you this evening. One is wilderness life. And another one is worshipping community. When you think of the fourth book of Psalms, you cannot afford to miss these two thoughts. One is wilderness life. Very much, very much highlighted. And worshipping community, that's also very much there. That's what I was sharing with you some of the Psalms so far. But now let us look at some of the verses. Psalm 90 verse 12 Moses says um, in his psalm, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. He's not talking about years. Lord, uh, we are just starting a new year. 2021 has come. Help us to be wise in handling. Give us a heart of wisdom to take care of this new year. No, Moses prayed long, long back. 
teach us to number our days. That is wilderness life. We are not enjoying the life lifelong. It's not months and years we can plan and enjoy. James says, how dare you can say it like that? You have to say, if it is God's will, and if you are alive, we will do such and such things. We will go such and such, to such and such place. You remember that uh, study we had from the book of James. He says very clearly, you have to say, if it is God's will, we do that. So, my first point is, when you look at teach us the number of our days, there are many messages are coming out. Number one, we do not know exactly when is going to be the last day of our life. In case tonight, if Jesus is going to come back, today is the last day for all of us. Tomorrow we are going to be with him eternally. Otherwise, if the death is going to come, none of us can say uh, when the death will come. None of us can say. With a heavy heart, I just wanted to share with you uh, two of my good friends are no more in December. Even yesterday when Brother Anand was praying, uh, he uh, solemnly prayed, Lord, 2020 has gone. Uh, some of us have lost our own uh, loved ones through Corona and many sufferings. That's what uh, he prayed. And his own sister passed away. But let me talk to you about these two people. One is uh, T. Prasad, a wonderful brother. He was in Ujjain as a missionary student from Andhra Pradesh. And uh, I very clearly remember the visit I had to Ujjain, staying with his, in his room and uh, speaking in Ujjain EU when Prasad was a student. Later, he became Dr. T. Prasad and uh, he became one of the elders, uh, leaders for uh, World Vision India. He was in uh, Chennai. In one of our Bible studies, uh, we prayed for his wife and daughter. Sudden, massive heart attack. And after the funeral, two, two days later, his daughter was celebrating her 13th birthday. My God. Uh, then, 2020 was closed with another brother, John Timothy from Bangalore, EGF. When he was in Chennai, he visited our house many times in USA office. I clearly remember the times we had talking about uh, Bible and he was so much passionate about Bible studies. And to, uh, on the last day of 2020, he was in his church, suddenly collapsed, leaving his wife and two daughters, John Timothy. My brothers and sisters, I'm not threatening you. I'm not saying that uh, we should uh, think of death, but we need to pray like Moses. Lord, teach us number our days and that may gain a heart of wisdom. Each day is precious. I'm so happy that Lavanya prayed very nicely starting. Uh, not only a new uh, year, we have a new day. Praise God. Every day is precious from God. Lord, help us to number our days. Psalm 95, it talks about terror of night and arrows by the day. Clearly, it's about the wilderness life. We do not know when it can happen. Suddenly, in the day or in the night, it can happen. But God is with us. Very clear, God is with us. And Psalm 103 very powerful psalm. One commentator said that one of the classical psalms, uh, very uh, important for praising the Lord. 10 to 12, I'll read. Uh, he does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, for so far has removed our transgression from us. That is about God's love. So my brothers and sisters, the ups and downs in the wilderness, wilderness life will be there. But God's love is precious. 
and even uh, Psalm 106, 1 not 6, talks about God's grace. God's love and God's grace is abundant. In fact, I need to take little time to tell you about uh, Psalm 106. It's a big psalm. That's the last psalm in this uh, book. Verse 13 onwards, when you look at, but they soon forgot what he had done and did not wait for his plan to unfold. In the desert, they gave in to the craving in the wilderness, they put God to test. Very unfortunate, very unfortunate. The psalmist is taking the history and going back. And from 13 onwards, he's talking about the real, lit literally he's talking about the wilderness life. Those who uh, are forefathers. God was gracious in the wilderness, but our forefathers in the wilderness are unfaithful. So my brothers and sisters, we are warned that our life is not permanent in this world. And we may experience God's love, but still we need to be very careful that we should not put God to test. Remember that. Let me close with this last thought that is a worshiping community. Wilderness life is very much part of it. And uh, we all uh, are going ups and downs. We have challenges in our personal life, in our family life, in the church, in our ministry. It's typical uh, numbers. That is the life of people of Israel in numbers. But when you look at this uh, passage, book four, we can see some lovely psalms highlighting about praise and worship. Look at Psalm 95, a hymn of praise, worship, and a lovely song. And later I mentioned 100, gratefulness, joyfulness in worship. It is not a burden for us to worship. Oh, somehow I have to go and worship. Not like that. With a grateful heart, with a joyful heart, worship. Then it's a corporate worship. Come, let us go and worship the Lord. Such a joy. When there's a revival going on, that's the way it happened. Everybody will be just singing in such a way that everybody will be, the way in which they sing, people can know that, oh, we are going to worship. Call to worship. Psalm 96 and 98. Lovely, lovely psalms. I'm sure that in many of our mission camps, conferences, people would have, people have read Psalm 96 and 98. Take time to read. It is the people of God are uh, singing new songs, worshipping, so that nations, other peoples will just come and worship the Lord. Call them. A worshipping community is a uh, contagious community. They just bring joy. They bring love and peace to others. 99, a very special psalm in this book. Holiness of God is exalted. You read that psalm, you can see that holiness of God is highlighted. My brothers and sisters, uh, we need to take make note of it. Holiness is very important. 103, already I told you, one of the very, very powerful psalms. You cannot afford to miss it. Praising God for his grace. As a community of God's people, we need to worship him, adore him. Before I close, I want to uh, just share with you this one thought. Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. Isaiah is telling about it, later part. We are in the wilderness life. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. That's true. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. So when you think of the wilderness life, it is not only the dry. Many sorts of challenges will be there in our Christian life, in our Christian family, 
and in our Christian ministry. But when you go through this, as the prophet says, through Isaiah, God has told us, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. Even in this evening, I do not know what is the condition of our spiritual life. If you feel that you are in the wilderness, hold on to this promise of God. Three questions. How much I long to be in the presence of God? Psalm 84, verse 4 and 5. Better to memorize it and let it be a part of your heart and a part of your life and ministry. Long to be in the presence of God. Brother Andrew says it is uh, the pres um, practicing the presence of God. Not only in the in being in the presence of God, practicing the presence of God in our life. Secondly, with all my ups and downs in life, do I really trust in the Lord? Thirdly, am I a part of a worshipping church or a fellowship or community? If not, why don't you take effort, join together with like-minded people and worship the Lord. Enjoy the presence of God in a fellowship, in a community. God bless you. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for these lovely songs. We are so much excited to the greatness of the songs. For our personal life, it's bringing, it's bringing warning. It is challenging us to consider our heart, to consider our spiritual uh, commitment. At the same time, we thank you, Lord, for motivating us to consider com community living with songs. Help me and help us to praise you and worship you meaningfully at the same time with all sincerity. Continue to minister to us. Give us good night rest. If it is your will, help us to see the new day with your new strength and with your new grace and mercy. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen.